In this podcast, we're going to take a look at the identity matrix and uh, we're going to see what it's good for. Before we do that, let's take a look at matrix equations. And quite simply, a matrix equation is the same thing as uh, the way an equation would normally be. Uh, we need to get equality. And so in this particular case, we have a 3 by 3 matrix equal to a 3 by 3 matrix. And uh, one of the unique things about matrix equations is that the elements also have to be equal. So row 1, column 1 has to equal the element in row 1, column 1. And same thing for the other elements. We have to get equality within the matrices themselves. So just take a second and look at both of those matrices and see that we do have equality between them. Next thing I want to do is let's take a look at something that we know. 2 times what is going to give me 2? Well, we know that 2 times 1 is going to give us 2 because 2 times 1 is 2. And so what we end up getting here is a true statement. Now the same thing can be said if we think about what times negative 3 is going to give us negative 3. Well, again, 1 times negative 3 is going to give me, that product is going to give me negative 3. So once again, I get a true statement. Now the purpose of this little exercise was, was to get us to remember that 1 times anything is going to give us that anything. And so let's bring our attention to a, a quick example that we uh, are familiar with. Um, let's say 1 half x is equal to 4. Well, in order to solve this, we know that we would multiply both sides by 2, and we would get 4 times 2, which is 8. But the reason why I wanted to talk about this is bring our attention to what actually happens in this little instance right here. We know that half of 2 is going to be 1. So a lot of times we don't write this 1 right here. We just write x is equal to 8. But I kind of wanted to bring our attention to this. What happens when we take 1 times x? Well, this product right here is going to give us x. So that's where the x comes from. And again, we often leave that out, but it's an important part of solving equations. So the purpose of uh, today's corncast is to take a look at what happens if we don't have variables anymore. We have matrices instead. Well, instead of matri uh, x, we'll have matrix x. Well, what times matrix x is going to give us our matrix? So that's the purpose of uh, today's corncast. Now let's answer the question. What is the matrix identity? Please note that we are not doing scalar multiplication here. We are not multiplying a number um, to this matrix right here. So 1 will not work right here. We are multiplying a matrix times a matrix. So when we do that, let's uh, go ahead and take a look at our dimensions. We know that we have a 2 by 2 is equal to a 2 by 2. We know that the uh, columns of the first matrix have to equal the rows of the second. So I know that, that uh, the number of columns has to be 2. And that I know that also my result matrix uh, has 2's in it. So the uh, first matrix has to be a 2 by 2 matrix. Now what this 2 by 2 matrix is, I don't know. That's the point of this particular corn cast right here. But I do know that I need to find those four elements. When multiplied to 1, negative 2, 3, negative 4, I'm going to get the same matrix, 1, negative 2, 3, and negative 4. Well, when multiplying, we know that we have to get a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2 to get a 2 by 2. So what can these values be? Now, the most common thing that we do in algebra is we use the, make the use of variables. So since I don't know what these values are, I'm going to use variables, A, B, C, and D. Now I'm going to go ahead and just multiply these two matrices out right here. Well again, a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 2. And again, recalling that I'm going to multiply my rows um, times my columns is going to give me a 2 by 2 matrix. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a little bit of room right here with some space. So some space for my four elements, two rows and my two columns. And I'm going to go ahead and, and multiply those values. So row 1 times column 1 is going to give me row 1, column 1. So A times 1 is A. B times 3 is 3B. And I'm going to add those together. 
Now I'm going to bring my attention to the second column. So now I'm going to have row 1 times column 2. So a times negative 2 is negative 2a. And b times negative 4 is negative 4b. So now that I'm done with the first row, I'm going to bring my attention to the second row and to the first column. So c times 1 is c. b times 3 is 3d. And once again, I'm going to add those together. And then lastly, row 2, column 2. c times negative 2 is negative 2c. And d times negative 4 is negative 4d. Now, that 2 by 2 matrix is the result of this product. And it's going to equal my other 2 by 2 matrix. Now, what we have a situation here is we have a situation where we have a 2 by 2 matrix equal to a 2 by 2 matrix. So because of matrix equality, we should be able to relate these two matrices together. Now, don't be al alarmed that there's variables in here. That's OK. So let's take a look at what we can do with uh, these two 2 by 2 matrix that are equal to one another. OK. So again, with matrix equations, I know that row 1, column 1 has to equal row 1, column 1. So what I'm going to do is just set them equal. So A plus 3B is going to be equal to 1. I know that row 1, column 2 has to equal row 1, column 2. So negative 2A minus 4B has to equal negative 2. I know that row 2, column 1 has to equal row 2, column 1. So C plus 3B has to equal 3. And lastly, row 2, column 2 has to equal row 2, column 2. So negative 2C minus 4D has to equal negative 4. So right now, it looks like a big mess. I got four equations with four unknowns. But let's look carefully at this. If I notice my top two equations here, take a careful look at them, what do I notice? Well, you guessed it. I noticed that they both share the same variable, a and b in this one, and a and b in that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to group those two, and I'm going to stack them on top of one another. And what you probably notice is that we end up with a system of equations with two unknowns. And we know how to solve that. Two equations, two unknowns. Well, look what else happened. If I look at my other two that I have, notice that the same thing happened. I have two equations with two unknowns. So again, if I stack those two equations, I now have two equations with two unknowns. And once again, I can use my systems of equations to solve for C and D in this equation and A and B in this one. So that's my objective. Find A, find B, find C, and find D. So I can find A and B in this system, C and D in this one, and I'll have all four that I need. OK, so here we go. Well, I'm going to choose to use elimination in solving this, because I notice that if I multiply the top equation by 2, I'll get my opposites. So 2 times a is 2a. 2 times 3b is going to give me a 6b. And 2 times 1 is going to give me a 2. Old, old school, I add these up. So negative 2a plus 2a cancels out. Negative 4b plus 6b is going to give me a 2b. And negative 2 plus 2 is going to give me a 0. Divide both sides by 2. And b is going to equal 0. All right, there's one of my unknowns. So now I'm going to go ahead and plug this back into the uh, top equation. So a plus 3 times 0 is going to give me 1. Well, 3 times 0 goes to 0. 0 plus a is a, so a is going to equal 1. So very quickly, I was able to solve for both those unknowns. Same process in the other one. I'm going to use elimination again, because I again have my opposites. So 2 times c is 2c. 2 times 3d is going to give me a 6d. And 2 times 3 is going to give me a 6. Old school add. My c's cancel out. Negative 4d plus 6d is going to give me a positive 2d. And negative 4 plus uh, 6 is going to give me a 2. Divide both sides by 2. And D is going to equal 1 this time. 
And once again, plug this into the top equation. C plus 3 times 1 is going to equal 3. Well, uh, 3 times 1 is going to give me 3. Subtract 3 from both sides, and C is going to equal 0. So, with some uh, quick solving systems of equations, I was able to find my AB, my A, my D, and my C. So now what we want to do with this is we now start with we look back to the equation that we started with, A, B, C, D times our matrix. And what we can do now is we just uh, quite simply substitute these values into the matrix. So I'm going to substitute a 1 in for my A. I'm going to substitute my 0 in for my B. A 0 in for my C. And a 1 in for my D. And I'm going to multiply that times my matrix. And I'm going to get my resulting matrix. Now, assuming I did all my math correctly, the product of this matrix times that matrix is going to give me 1, negative 2, 3, negative 4, which is going to give be equal to what it should be equal to, 1, negative 2, 3, and negative 4. So that's uh, the whole purpose of this corner cast was to find out this matrix right here, the identity matrix. Now, just to kind of show us that it works, let's take a look at the other situation where we're going to multiply on this side. So I'm going to call this a right multiply. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug in my matrix. I'm going to plug in my 1, 0, 0, 1 matrix to this, which I found in my last slide to be my identity matrix. And if I multiply this out, I should get this matrix right here. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so once again, I'm going to do my rows and columns. So my rows in my first matrix times my column in my second matrix. So again, a 2 by 2 is going to give me a 2 by 2. And that 2 by 2 should equal 1, negative 2, 3, and negative 4. Okay, so here we go. 1 times 1 is 1, negative 2 times 0 is 0. Add them up. Move on to the next column. So okay. 1 times 0 is 0, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Row 2, column 1. So row 2, column 1 now. Okay, 3 times 1 is 3, and negative 4 times 0 is 0. Once again, add them up. And lastly, row 2, column 2. 3 times 0 is 0. And negative 4 times 1 is negative 4. And with some quick uh, order of operations, 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 minus 2 is negative 2. 3 plus 0 is 3. And 0 minus 4 is negative 4. And does that indeed equal what it's supposed to? And the answer is yes. So this matrix right here, this 1, 0, 0, 1 matrix, does give me the correct product on that. Now let's bring our attention to the definition of the identity matrix. Please take a moment and write this definition down. The identity matrix is a square matrix. So basically it has to be a 2 by 2 matrix or a 3 by 3 matrix and so on. So 4 by 4 or 5 by 5 and it could, as long as it's square we can have an identity matrix in which the leading diagonal entries are 1. Well, the leading diagonal of a matrix always starts in the upper left and ends in the lower right. So as long as it starts in the upper left and ends in the lower right, all these values need to be 1 in order to have an identity matrix. So if we look at our 3 by 3 matrix, we start in the upper left, we have a 1, and we go down to the lower right, they're all 1's. So as long as that diagonal value right there has 1's, then we can have an identity matrix. And the last thing to consider is that all other elements have to be 0. So as we already talked about with the 2 by 2 identity matrix, those values are 0. Where it changes a little bit is when we get uh, 3 by 3 and larger dimension identity matrices. As long as the di uh, leading diagonal is 1, everything else has to be 0. 
then this square matrix is denoted with the capital letter I. And that's our identity matrix. So here's the deal. If we take a matrix A and multiply it by our identity matrix, we'll get matrix A. And if we take our identity matrix and multiply it to matrix A, we'll also get matrix A. Now where this is useful for is if we take an Algebra 1 example where we have 1 times x is equal to, let's say, 8. We know that 1 times x is going to give us x. Well, matrices behave very much the same way, except we can't multiply by 1. Instead, we're going to take matrix x and we're going to multiply it to our identity matrix. And now we're going to get some answer matrix. In very much the same way as when we multiply by 1 to get uh, 1 times x here to get x, our identity times matrix x is going to give us matrix x. And then that will equal our answer matrix. So we're going to use this concept uh, here in the future with this, but this is a really important uh, matrix to, to know. I hope you enjoyed that corncast.